Brokeback Mountain is a 2005 American Western film directed by Ang Lee, starring Heath Ledger and Jake Gyllenhaal, adapted from the short story of the same name by Annie Prowl from 1997. It tells the story of two young men that fall in love, and over the years you basically get to see how their relationship builds up. It tells the story about love, what it means to love, you know, the compromises that we sometimes have to go through in order to love, you know, one of them ends up in a marriage to a rather rich woman, but he's still pretty unhappy. Um, the other one gets to marry his high school sweetheart, but he's still, you know, not all that fulfilled in his relationship. And over the years you realize that no matter what was going on, in the end, they were really happy with each other. You know, which is quite a great movie and quite a nice story to tell. If you know my channel, you probably know I've also worked on a couple of Joker figures and of course I'm a huge fan of The Dark Knight. But I will admit, back when The Dark Knight came out, I was quite skeptical that um, Heath Ledger would be a good choice as the Joker. And naturally, as we all know, he pretty much knocked it out of the park. So Brockback Mountain is one of my favorite films of all time. If you haven't seen it, you should definitely check it out. And today I will show you how we paint this 1-6 scale head sculpt based on Ennis Delmar, the Heath Ledger character from Brockback Mountain. So this is what we want to do for today. Um, as you can see he came out quite nicely. I actually really like how I did the hair and the eyes are quite amazing. I'm really happy with myself. Alright, Sometimes it's good to pat yourself on the back, alright? And if you can't tell already, um, I'm doing this one straight from the top of my head, no script, so let's just get to it. The first thing you need are of course some soft all free pastels. I always use soft pastel chalk because it just looks way better than any different kind, alright? Just let's get down to it. Um, you can use any scalpel to just sand them down until you have a soft powder and then you will simply apply it to the surface. You know, if you paint a head sculpt, it's very much just like painting a standard portrait of a face or doing makeup or whatnot, just on, you know, a three-dimensional surface instead of, you know, just a canvas. Naturally, you want your canvas, your head sculpt, to be as clean as possible. That's why we want to use some nail polish remover. Um, just use a Q-tip, swipe it all over the surface and make sure that everything is clean and dry. Once everything is dry, you can start applying your paint. I recommend starting with the lips first, just to get the darker areas right at the beginning. You can just pick up a little bit of paint with your brush. And I recommend using some dark brown and some dark red. Just be careful not to use too much of it. As you can see, just a very tiny amount is already enough to cover the lips. This will give him that natural rosy flesh colored skin tone. Then use a bigger brush and just dust away all the excess paint. And make sure you only leave the desired amount on it. And as you can tell it's already starting to look better. Now next up we want to use some standard skin color and see what it looks like on the surface. So each head sculpt really is quite unique and each skin tone is unique on itself. And when you paint a lot of it is trial and error. So in order to get through that trial and error you really have to experiment a lot and see what paint and what combination of paints look best in the end. But generally speaking as you can see, I've just put down I've just put down some dark red on the surface of his forehead. This will go nicely with some brown later on and some skin tone. We're just playing around right now and seeing what skin color looks best. A little bit more skin color and some orange on his forehead. That should look nicely. Now make sure that you don't leave out any white spots. You want to cover the entire area, especially on the nose. And remember, the head sculpt itself is doing a lot of the work for you. So when you apply the paint, remember, most of it will sink down to the surface where you have, where you have indentations on the sculpt, like the wrinkles, 
the eye portions around the nose and wrinkles around there down at the mouth this is where I recommend using some dark brown that's how we can bring out all the natural shadows and this will also help the paint pop a little bit more Now any excess paint that looks like it's a bit too much will just get swiped away with our brush. And there is a little bit on the chin that we want to fix. A dash of red and some skin color should be enough. Again make sure to liberally add all the skin color to the surface. Skin color in general can't get all that dark, but if you use too much brown paint or too much red you will ruin your head sculpt and you have to start all over again. But then again, that's the fun of trial and error. Once you're happy with the first layer, you can apply some varnish, let it dry, and then start with the second coat. So right now I'm applying another coat of some dark brown and dark red to his lips to make him a bit more pronounced. Yeah, now they, now they no longer look all that bright, that's better. And the area around the lips, the cheek, his chin, we can also apply some skin color right there. That's gonna look a lot better. When you paint, you also wanna make sure that you use the right brush for the right area. Right now we're going towards the edges of his hair, where the roots are. And I'm using a bigger brush right here, so we can cover more area. If we're working on the lips or around the eyes, you can use the smallest brush you have. But right now we want to also do a little bit of paint on his ears. And darken a bit of his forehead. There we go, also apply some paint on the hair. When we later start painting the hair, this will also help make sure that you have some skin beneath. Otherwise it will look a little bit of weird if you just have skin growing on a white surface. Now make sure to only, only slightly add a little bit of brown paint. I'm switching to a much bigger brush and also dusting away a lot of excess paint. Once again this version of Heave Ledger is supposed to be a cowboy so his skin can be a little bit dirty and skin itself is rarely, rarely natural. Nobody really looks like a Ken doll. So we want to apply a little bit more of that jagged rustiness on his face. A little bit more brown paint right around his nose and at the edges of his face around the hair roots. This will again make sure that he looks a lot more three-dimensional. Again think of it like painting a portrait, only that again you're not painting on a traditional canvas but instead on a three-dimensional sculpt. And if you keep that in mind, you can pretty much use it to your advantage as well. Because the sculpt itself can do most of the work for you. If you know a little bit of what you're doing. Alright, let's not forget the neck area as well. We want to paint that too. So just apply a lot of skin color right here. And I also want to darken his chin a little bit more. There we go, that's starting to look a lot more better. See, whenever you paint, until the very end, you won't be satisfied with the way it looks. And that's a pretty nice, well, nice way of saying, um, most things look like crap until the moment they're finished. But that should give you enough motivation and desire to make it look as nice as possible. 
And in the end, if there are some flaws in your head sculpt, remember, those imperfections are what make it perfect and beautiful, right? After all, we are painting an organic looking skin texture, so it's okay if you are messing up a little bit. Just remember, don't use too much paint, alright? Pastels can always go darker, only acrylics can go brighter, and it's very difficult to get excess pastel chalk away. If you make one tiny mistake, you can pretty much start painting the entire thing all over again. But after a couple of tries, you should be satisfied with your desired skin tone. So once you're done with that, you can use some white acrylics and water them down a little bit until we have a nice homogeneous mixture. There we go, make sure to wipe away any excess paint on your brush. And with that, we can start painting his eyes. I recommend using the tiniest brush you have lying around to always paint eyes. And it's also a very good idea to just start carefully brushing around the eye area before you even apply any paint, just to get a feel for what it's like to paint the eyes. And then carefully tilt the head and draw your brush from one end to the other. There we go. We are softly applying tiny little strokes. With tiny little strokes we are softly applying all the white paint. There we go. And on his other eye as well. And remember, it's always better to do multiple thin layers instead of one thick layer. So this will take a few minutes. But in the end, it will be all worthwhile. Is that how you say it? I'm not even sure anymore. But yeah, just paint the white around his eyes until it looks good. That's pretty much what it's like. There we go. A little bit more white. Make sure that you're not leaving out any areas. That should be a good base coat. This is also a good moment to mention that if you haven't already, um, subscribe to the channel. I mean, leave a comment, drop a like, do all that fun jazz, I'm gladly appreciating that. No, I seriously mean it, if you haven't already, <laughs> share the video, subscribe. I mean, you don't have to, but if you want to, you can also give me some money on Patreon. I would also be extremely happy about that. No, seriously, <laughs> follow me on Patreon, <laughs> drop me some money, subscribe to the channel, and do all that stuff. And if you give me some money on Patreon, you can also get access to videos early. And I'm also uploading an hour-long version of this same tutorial. So it's twice as much information if you want to get to see every little detail of how you paint Heath Ledger correctly. Well, that's a great investment, son. What more can I tell you? After a couple more lines we're pretty much done and that's the shape of the eye we want. Now we can start actually painting the eye. Just use some black acrylics, water them down a lot. And as you can see I've pretty much switched to the smallest brush I have. And with that we can carefully just adding a tiny little black circle. Make sure to widen the area a little bit. 
Yeah, it's gonna be a little bit of a thick circle. Be careful not to ruin it. I mean, if you make a mistake with acrylics, you can always get back and fix it. But do be careful with painting around his face area. Any excess paint can just also be wiped off on your hand. And make sure you're also doing the same on this other eye. Just carefully add tiny little strokes. And remember to always go back and apply more paint to your brush. Your brush isn't like a pen with a near infinite amount of paint in it. You will regularly have to go back to your mixing plane and add some more paint. Now oh, this is starting to look a lot better. Mm, I do believe I've just messed it up a little bit. But we're gonna fix that later. After all I also do want to add a little bit of red and brown to the bottom of his eyes so that might also be helpful we're gonna see about that later now I'm fixing up his left eye and uh, I'm also I think I'm actually starting to like it this looks better I'm not sure do we want a thin white line sometimes I want to leave it in sometimes I want to leave it out mm, I'm thinking about leaving it out yeah, but for now, as you can see, I've also accidentally dropped a little bit of black paint on his face. Now we want to switch to our scalpel and just carefully scratch it away. I've already primed and applied varnish to the head sculpt, so if we just ever so slightly scratch it away, it shouldn't damage the paint. And there we go, it's removed. Now this is also a good opportunity to iron out any mistakes we've previously made with black paint. Just apply a little bit of white on the edges until we have the desired shape. This is gonna look a lot better. There we go. While I'm painting the eyes this is also a good moment I think to actually start talking a little bit about Brokeback Mountain. It really is one of my favorite films, and quite honestly one of the best love stories I've ever seen. I mean, it sits right up there with, what, the Before Trilogy, you know, Before Sunrise, Sunset and Midnight. Those actually would also make for good figures, I think, if we work on Jesse and Celine. Anyway, I love that one too. But coming back to Brokeback, it is such a great movie, man. Um. Ang Lee also worked on The Incredible Hulk, which is, you know, whatever. It's a superhero movie from the early 2000s, what do you want to say? Quite a weird career. I'm not the biggest fan of Life of Pi, but I don't mind it. Um, I do, however, love Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. That movie is awesome. <laughs> that movie is quite fantastic. You wouldn't think that the guy that did that flick also worked on The Hulk and then Broke Big Mountain. What a weird career. But yeah, I do love Ang Lee. God damn it, what happened to Gemini Man? <laughs> Why though? It almost looked good. <laughs> Whatever. Alright, I'm almost done with the eyes, but I do want to say a few more things about Brokeback Mountain. It is such a great comfort food movie. You know, something you can just put on in the background. And there are moments where I pay attention. There are moments where I just want to listen to the soundtrack and just vibe with it. You know, there are also parts of the film that are quite hilarious. I mean, it is a drama after all, and there is quite a lot of sad romantic stuff in it, but there are fun parts in it, like when Jake Gyllenhaal and Heath Ledger have to shoot a deer, and pretty much all the Jake Gyllenhaal scenes are quite fun. Even the stuff with his marriage is quite hilarious at times. <laughs> anyway, if you haven't already seen it, you should definitely watch Brokeback Mountain. Now we are working on his eyelids, just 
carefully make sure to apply one very very thin line of black paint around the top of his eye. I recommend tilting the head sculpt to a comfortable angle until you get the brush just right. There we go. One more tiny thin layer. And it's already starting to look like a decent human being. Nearly there, nearly there. We can start getting the resemblance. I can see where where the head sculpt ends and Ennis Del Mar begins. Alright, a little bit more black around the top. Yeah, that's gonna look a lot more like him. And we also want to do the same on his other eye. Just once again carefully apply a thin layer of black paint. And once we're happy with that we can start mixing up some brown paint. Again remember to also apply a little bit of water. This should make it easier for the paint to stick to your brush. We also want to add a little bit of white and a little bit of yellow can't help either. Again make sure to mix it up all nice and well. And I do believe his eyes are a little bit darker so we want to mix in some black too. Nah, that might have been too much black. Alright, let's fix it up again with a little bit of brown. That's the thing about acrylics. In the end, you really have to try and find your own mixture. There aren't really any right or wrong answers. A lot of it can be just done with... I'd say sensibility. You know, just go with the flow if you want to say it like that. And my final secret, just to make sure that the eyes really pop, add a little bit of gold. Oh great, now the cap got stuck. You know what, that won't bother me, that's still the same. Alright, add the gold to your paint. And again, this will give it a little bit of a more metallic look. And give the paint a bit more variety. Now we just got it unstuck, that's better. Alright, we might have to use a little bit of gold later. There we go, that looks a lot better. And now we can go back and start applying the paint on his eye. Alright, once again use a very tiny brush and make sure to carefully apply brown paint to the middle of his eye. A couple thin layers should do the trick. And when you paint them, also make sure to leave just a very tiny thin black line on the outside of the circle. Alright, careful. One more time, there we go. And that's the way you want him to look. Now a little bit more paint to the other side of his eye. Fix that. And carefully brush it over. Now switch him around and apply the rest of the paint to the top of the circle. There we go, there we go. That's starting to look better and better with each layer of paint. And... Oh, there we go. We messed them up, but we can fix that later. In the meantime, we also want to add a little bit more white to the eye color and brighten it up a little bit more. As you can see, I've already fixed it up in between shots. That's the thing about acrylics. Every tiny mistake can also be corrected immediately. And there we go. Brighten up his eye a bit more. 
make sure to just leave out a little bit of dark brown paint we just want to brighten the area a bit and apply some accents and details remember to always go back and collect more paint after all we are using the tiniest brush we can pretty much use and we can start mixing up some black paint right, add a lot more water and a bit more black paint and mix up your acrylics with the water and then we just want to add a very tiny black dot to the middle careful not to mess it up there we go remember all we need to do is just drop in with the brush and then slowly and carefully apply the paint if you accidentally do mess it up well we can always just correct it there we go a bit more black here and to the other side as well careful and one tiny drop there we go that's once again starting to look a lot better and a lot more like him but we're not even halfway there yet so first up you want to take some brown pastel chalk add some black acrylics and a lot of water and mix up the entire thing until you have a nice dark brown mixture it might take a lot of time to mix up the brown pastel paint after all it is a powder but if we do it correctly it will look that much more better on your sculpt i've also sanded down a bit of black acrylics and another shade of brown in case you might need that but for now the dark brown pastels and the acrylics are enough there we go once it dries it will almost seamlessly blend with the pastels take your small brush once again and with that we can start painting the eyebrows just carefully start applying the paint to the surface and one small stroke after another just carefully apply the paint after all we do want them to blend seamlessly with the skin color now make sure to start exactly at the end of his nose on the top of his face until the edge of his eyebrow area right where the eye ends there we go just carefully applying a bit more paint this is gonna look a lot better there we go and as you can see with each with each consecutive layer we are adding more paint and giving the sculpt more definition this way it will also look like natural hair that actually does grow around his eye area and not like paint slapped onto his head sculpt there we go once more and another one Remember to always go back and apply more paint to your brush. And one thin tiny brush stroke after another. There we go. And this is starting to look a lot better already. It might take a lot of time and a couple of layers, but in the end it will be worthwhile and worth all the effort.
And continuing with his eyes. We're still doing work on the eyebrows. Now we're gonna do the same on the other side. Carefully, carefully applying one thin stroke after another. After all, we do want it to look like hair that's naturally growing on the top of his face. There we go, think of it like applying makeup and slowly adding more tiny strokes to the side. A bit more on the top of his eye over there. There we go. Again, make sure to use tiny careful motions. And adding a bit more over here. And as you can see, we're also switching up directions right now. We're not just painting left to right, we're also painting right to left. To give it that natural look of hair that's growing over different hair. There we go, that's gonna look a bit more entwined. And now we're gonna apply a bit more shadow to the side. Now you're gonna use a completely clean brush with nothing on it. And with that you can start blending the paint. That's why we've mixed in acrylics and pastel chalk. The high amount of pastel chalk will make the paint look like it's blending right into the texture. As you can see, the paint is getting more and more translucent and the edges between the brown and the skin color are disappearing more and more. There we go, carefully wipe off any excess paint and start applying a little bit more pastel chalk. This is gonna help blending the paint with the surface. And make sure to also do the same on the other side. There we go, adding a little bit more brown over here. And blending the paint with the surface of the skin color. Now he's really starting to look like Heath Ledger. Alright, we almost got it. A little bit more brown paint to the top. And closing the gap. There we go. Alright, you're gonna do this a couple more times. And with each layer you can see we've made the eyebrows thicker and thicker until we want the desired result. There we go, this is gonna look a lot more like Ennis Delmar. I mean there are so many different Heath Ledger sculpts that we could work on. Alright, start applying a bit more paint and do some more blending over there. As I was saying I've worked on a lot of Joker figures over the years. And this actually is my first Heath Ledger figure that's just him without any Joker makeup on it. So I'm quite happy to have gotten the opportunity to do that. In the future I would really love to work on... Um, what was it called again? In German it was called, what, Night of Passion? Um, a Knight's Tale, exactly. The, the night movie, you know, from the early 2000s. That thing was hilarious. I love that one. Oh, this is what happens when you're distracted. I've messed up the paint a little bit. Well, this is where the scalpel comes in handy. With our trusted scalpel, we can just scratch away all the excess paint. And again, this will make it look a lot more like hair that's naturally growing on the top of his face. Make sure not to cut and scratch too deeply. After all, we carefully just wanna get rid of the excess paint and leave just the desired amount of paint on his face. This is quite a risky strategy, so keep in mind you don't want to scratch too deeply, otherwise you're damaging your sculpt. You just want to ever so lightly scratch away the paint and stick to the surface area of your head sculpt. Uh. Burp. There we go, doing that a lot more, this will help blend the paint. Now we're also doing the same on the other side. So, as I was saying about A Knight's Tale, man, that is such a fun movie as well, alright? With so many cool costumes, and it has a David Bowie song in it, so it's pretty much made for me. Um, Dr. Parnassus would also be fun. You know, that's a great costume. 
Now carefully just blending the surface and scratching away the excess paint. There we go. Nice. I really like the way it looks. Not bad. But we still have a little bit of work to do. So for now we want to also apply a bit more pastel chalk. Use a tiny brush. Take some dark brown. And ever so lightly just rub it into the eyebrow area. Darken them a little bit. Keep in mind we want to have a nice balance between skin color and dark brown eyebrows. And with each layer the paint is getting thicker and thicker. And you can always still make out the layer from before. I can still see the first layer we started with. So that's gonna give it that nice translucent look we're going for. There we go. A bit more black. Be careful with the black pastel chalk. This is the most aggressive pigment you have. It's really gonna stick to the surface so just apply a very tiny amount of it. As you can see we're already scratching away a bit more of the paint until we have the desired look. This is gonna give us a nice looking result. There we go. Just carefully scratching away and we're gonna do the same on the other side as well. Do be careful to also only touch the eyebrow area. You don't want to accidentally slice away a bit of his skin. That's gonna look a lot nicer. Not bad, not bad. Almost done. And just scratching away the final parts of the eyebrows. As you can see I'm just holding the blade with my fingers. You can also have it in your holster or in your scalpel itself. But if we are working this closely I just recommend picking it up with your fingers itself. Now that we are completely ready we can use our dry brush brush. And simply brush away the final pieces of paint. Now I do want to brighten it up a little bit around the edges, so we're gonna use some skin color to help blend the paint. There we go, this is gonna look nicely. And a bit more brown to the other side of his eyebrow. Only, only carefully adding a bit more definition. We want to leave in the original paint. But we also want to pronounce the eyebrows with a few accents itself. A few more highlights over here. And another thin line there. There we go. And we're nearly finished I'd say. So, now we're gonna mix white, yellow and brown. And this is gonna give us the base coat for his hair. Once again make sure to mix up everything all good. There we go, adding a bit more yellow and more white. Ah, this is still too much dark brown. Alright, I've added a lot more yellow and white. Now we got the desired paint. This is gonna give us a nice base coat for the hair. Again, make sure to only paint the hair area. Do be careful with the skin. We don't want to mess up our skin paint tone right now. After all, you don't want to ruin all the hard work you've put into. Alright, in between layers we're adding a bit more white to brighten up our base coat and give our sculpt a bit more definition. Now carefully dry brush it. You can leave out some more highlights for later. After all this is just a second layer of blonde paint. And this will also give us more detail and definition. Now once everything is dry we can use a little bit of black paint with a lot of water like this. And then we can liberally apply it all over the surface. This way we're inking the entire area and pronouncing the sculpt once again. 
Right. Make sure to cover the entire thing and once again do be careful with the skin. You don't accidentally want to ink his skin. Only a little bit around the ears. This should look nicely. And a bit more to the bottom of his hair. There we go. Bit more over here. And remember to always go back once you're running out of paint. And also be careful when you're tilting the head sculpt because the paint has been watered down so much it will also start running. So keep that in mind as well. Now once the ink has dried we can use some white and silver and once again brighten up his skin color. I mean his hair color. Whatever, you get, you catch my drift, alright, you know what I'm saying. If you're this deep in the video, hey, thanks for watching, I appreciate it so much. <laughs> and also, I think you're, you're pretty much starting to understand the way I talk. But uh, if something has been unclear, uh, you can also just write a comment and just ask me, Mike, wh what the shit were you talking about? I'm a little bit confused. Yeah, yeah I, I will always read the comments and gladly explain any questions, for real. Now you can see the ink has dried and now we want to start blending the hair color again. It's looking a lot dirtier than we wanted it to. So we gotta clean that up again. Just carefully dry brushing with some light brown and start tilting the head and do the same to the other side of his hair as well. There we go. Almost done on that side. Whenever you dry brush, do keep in mind that you only want a little bit of paint on your brush. Just wipe away all the excess paint on a little bit of a towel on your hand and you should be good. Alright, mixing up some white and yellow again. Nah, that's too bright. A little bit of brown, there we go. And some more gold. And even a little bit of pastel chalk, there we go. This will give it a lot more definition. Now you can see we have a couple of different layers of brown mixed in with the black ink. And now all we have to do is apply layer of layer of blonde paint until we have the look we're going for. Once again, this might take a little bit of time, but it definitely is worth all the trouble. There we go, carefully dry brushing the top of his head. And you can see how the paint is only sticking to the surface area. I know we are a little bit out of focus right now, but you get the general idea. And in between we want to brighten up the paint once more. Adding a bit more white and a bit more yellow. And now we're gonna dry brush even carefullier. Or more careful whatever just with each layer you're gonna use less paint is what I'm trying to say all right <laughs> you can catch my drift all right you know what I'm trying to say you know what I'm you know what kind of point I'm trying to get across there we go this is gonna give us a bit more contrast especially with the black ink the bright yellow is gonna stick out that much more nicely. And again I apologize for being out of focus but you can still see where the paint is landing. There we go and switching up to the side now we are back in focus and carefully dry brushing it. Once again, remember to always brighten up your paint. 
A couple of layers should do the trick and then you're pretty much done with the hair as well. Now adding one more layer of bright blonde paint. Only applying highlights this time around. We don't want to cover the entire area. And make sure to paint up some brown spots as well. Until we have a nice mixture of dark paint beneath the surface and the edges. And some bright blonde highlights on top. Also doing the same on the other side. As you can see we're just carefully drawing our brush over the surface. One stroke after another. Apologies for uh, blocking the shot a little bit. And brightening up. Now we're only adding white and adding a final layer of highlights. Very carefully, ever so gently. As you can see, this is where the true beauty of the head sculpt gets unlocked. There we go, now we are pronouncing the wavy look of his hair. That's the waves we're going for. Bit more highlights on top. There was almost next to no paint on my brush at all, so we can pretty much go nuts. There we go, only sticking to the surface. The edges are still dark. This is exactly what we're going for. Alright, once we are done with that, we are gonna use a very, very tiny layer of red pastel chalk and carefully apply it to the bottom of his eye. There we go. This will take away a bit of the white look and make it look a bit more natural as well. This is also a very good way to pronounce the veins on his eye. Just be careful not to use too much red paint. Alright, a bit more red pastel chalk on the other side. And we can also apply a tiny layer of dark brown as well. And blowing away the excess paint. That's what we want. Nice. Alright, finally just pick up <clears throat> Alright, finally just pick up a little bit of white paint and put a very very tiny dot around this iris. This will give it a bit more definition and help the eye color pop. Alright, one on the left and also one on the right. Now that we are done with the eyes, we can also apply more pastel chalk on his hair. This will once again help the paint blend and make it look a bit more natural and less like acrylics. Alright, be careful not to blend the entire surface. We do want to leave out a bit of acrylics to give the hair the highlights. But if you've done it a couple of times, you should get the feeling for it just right. Alright, adding a bit more on the side here. And we can also mix in some black and some grey. And some brown pastel chalk on the other side. And as you can see, the different layers are still visible, but the edges of the paint have started to blend together. So it's looking a lot more homogenous. And massaging away all the edges, mixing in a bit more paint. 
We still have a couple of highlights left. But we are blending the paint together. Looking good. Alright, nearly finished at this point. Only two more things really remain. Now I'm giving it a bit more shadow. Alright, just carefully, carefully adding some dark brown and some black on the side of his ear and the hair. Alright, and adding some dark black here. And at the roots of his hair. Also blending away the acrylics over there. And as you can see the dark black around his roots is giving us a nice contrast to the bright blonde highlights. Now the last two things we want to do for today. Just add a little bit of gloss varnish to his eyes. This will give him that nice translucent look and help the eye color pop and also make him look that much more human. There we go, that's looking a lot more realistic. Ooh, every time, I just love the way it glosses. Very glossy, I like it. And I've almost, almost, almost forgotten it. How could I? Uh, mea culpa, shame on me and whatnot. Of course. How could I? We need some dark brown, all right? His mole. How could I forget his mole? His beautiful mole on the side of his face. I've worked on so many Christian Bale head sculpts with his stupid ass mole. How could I forget the one that Heath Ledger has? Of course. We're gonna do that as well. Does Christian Bale even have a mole? I think it's more like a wart. Whatever. Case in point, we're mixing up some brown pastels with a little bit of water and just carefully, carefully adding one, two, three, there we go. That's the desired result we wanted and that's pretty much all you have to do to paint our nearly perfect head sculpt. I mean, not that I wanna uh, tap myself on the back too much, but I am quite happy with the results. And this is by far one of the best figures I've worked on. So if you agree, uh, why not leave a like and a comment? Alright? And even better yet, share the video, share it with all your friends and enemies, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in once again. If you haven't already, you can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, do all that jazz, follow my Twitter accounts. I mostly post images of new figures. So you can also be informed when a new video is going up on there. And remember, if you do give me some money on Patreon, you can also get early access. I will drop your name down below and also mention you at the end and the beginning of every video. And once again, you will also get access to uncut versions of videos, longer tutorials. What more can I even tell you? So, once again, thanks for tuning in, I'll see you next time.